So let's walk through how to use PowerShell to find all the Active Directory objects that a group policy object impacts. So the first thing I got here is the name of the group policy I'm gonna be referencing for this. I'm gonna assign that to the name variable for future reference. And so using the get GPO commandment, we can take a look at that group policy object so that you know it is an object in my domain here. And then I'm gonna assign that to the GPO variable for future reference. And then to get the permissions on that group policy object, we use the get GP permission commandlet. And you can see there that I'm specifying the name as well as the all parameter. And the all parameter just tells get GP permission that we want to retrieve all of the permissions. And then I'm also filtering it using the where object commandlet, specifically looking for objects that have permission of GPO apply. So the object that the group policy object applies to. And so that output shows us that we've got a group so accounting is an alias but alias is just a domain local group as well as a user so i'm going to assign that to the scope variable so we can reference it in the future the next thing we want to do is find all the ous that that group policy object is linked to so that's what line 22 does so we're getting ad organizational unit using the get ad organizational unit commandment looking at all the OUs, specifically specifying the GP link property. That's the property that lists all the linked group policy objects. So then of course we're using the where object commandment to filter for OUs that have a GP link equal to our group policies ID. So if we run this line, we get an output of two OUs. So those are the only OUs that that group policy object is linked to. So then of course I will assign that output to the OUs variable. The last thing we'll look at, of course, is finding the impacted objects, finding the impacted objects in those OUs. So the first thing I got here is on line 26, is I'm saying if the scope includes authenticated users, well, then it's really easy. All we got to do is get all the objects in all of those OUs and return those. Uh, but if not, a little more complicated. So here, beginning at line uh, 31, I'm creating a scoped objects collection so that I can add objects to it. And then on line 33 to 35, I'm using a for each loop to get all of the groups that are in that scope. So you can see I'm using the where object to filter for groups and aliases. Uh, again, alias is just domain local groups. And then for each of those groups, getting all of the group members of that group and then adding it to the scoped objects variable. So if we run this little snippet and then we look at the scoped objects variable, you can see that we've got three users. And you remember there is one group in the scope variable. So we can look at scope again. So there's one group accounting. So if we do get a group member, see that those are the same three users. So that, that part is working. And the next thing I want to do here on line 37 and 39 is I'm adding to that scoped objects collection all the objects in scope that are explicit user and computers. And if you remember from the scope variable, that's just one. And so now if we looked at scoped objects, we have four users. And then line 40 here, if we had Sometimes users are members of multiple groups or specified explicitly and then also in a group. I would just filter for only the unique objects using that select object commandlet dash unique. You don't have to run it in this case because you can see we've only got four users, but in cases where there's more, it comes in handy. And then the last step would be for each of those OUs, we want to look at all the objects in that OU and find ones that are within scope. So line 43, I'm getting 80 object search base for that OU and then getting all the objects, but I'm specifically looking for the next line. So for the next line, there's where object looking for users and computers. And then that final line 45, I'm looking for objects that are part of the scoped objects collection. And then of course, outputting the name and object class for select object. So if we run this section, we should see all four of those users outputted because they're all part of the scope as well as they're also all NOUs that this group policy object is linked to. And so th there you go. You can see I ran that. We got that expected output. So the last step would be to convert this to a reusable function, which I took the time to do ahead of time. So I've got my script here. So you can see I've added in, I've got command and binding added in. I got my parameters. So you got, I can do display name or with a GUID. And so because of that, I'm using parameter sets. So this way someone can specify either a name or an ID of a group policy object, and it'll work for either. 
And then I've got my OUs here, like 104. I, since git AD organizational unit doesn't include the root domain, I have to look at the root of the domain using git AD domain just to make sure that that group policy object isn't linked. And if it is, add that to the OUs variable. And then you can see I'm also doing some error filtering here. So I'm checking to make sure that OUs has value, line 106. Making sure that scope.trustee has value, line 110. Uh, but the rest is just the same uh, steps from before, just in a convenient function format. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to make sure we've got this loaded into our session. And then this last line here, line 147, I'm using git GPO to get the same GPO that we've been looking at. So the value of name, which is policy of power. And then I'm piping that to the git GP impact commandlet, the one we just created, and then specifying the verbose flag. I added some verbosity in there so we could get some output while it was running. But you can see it actually went pretty quick. So if we if we scroll up here, we can see uh, what it went through and did, the OUs it added, and the scoped objects it added, and the scoped objects it added. And then it outputted our four users. So that is how you use PowerShell to find all the Active Directory objects that are impacted by a group policy object.